Hey my dudes, this week we are making a pecan tart. My name is Cecilia and welcome to my kitchen here in Stockholm, Sweden. Today is the second episode of our Thanksgiving tart series. We'll be making a pecan tart. I have never really liked pecan pie, to be honest with you. I always find it to be like cloyingly sweet, but I love pecans and I love the look of a pecan pie and it's so traditional and it's beautiful. So I wanted to make something that I wanted to eat. So this pecan tart is that. It's a little bit more elegant. It's definitely less sweet, but you still got that caramely element, that brown sugar element, and of course, pecans on pecans on pecans. <laughs> so let's get started. First things first, begin with the tart shell. I have a whole in-depth video about tart dough, but if you don't wanna watch that, here's what you need to know in 30 seconds. Mix together 125 grams of butter, 90 grams of powdered sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla sugar. Add in one egg and one egg yolk. Whisk together. Throw in 250 grams of flour. Mix that together. Wrap the dough in plastic and put it in the fridge for an hour, but better overnight. Roll out the dough and line your tart shell and then pop it into the freezer. On to the filling. We need to toast our pecans, so line a tray with parchment paper and lay the pecans out in a single layer. I have already divided the pretty ones I want to use on top from the other ones that will get chopped or ground into the filling. Toast in a 190 degree Celsius or 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for 10 to 15 minutes. My pecans are divided thusly. 50 grams, which will be chopped for the filling. 110 grams, which will be ground for the filling and about 175 grams of pretty ones for the top. When chopping, leave the pecans in fairly big chunkies. We want there to be texture in our filling. Set those to the side. Next up is grinding. I have a specialized grinder for nuts. I make a surprising amount of nut flours with this and use it at minimum several times a year. I have a link in the description if you'd like to buy one. They seem pretty common in Sweden, but not so much in the US. Do not try to grind the nuts in the food processor. It won't work and you'll end up with a pecan butter, not a pecan flour. You can substitute almond flour for the ground pecans if you'd like. Into a bowl, place 100 grams of softened butter, 40 grams of brown sugar, 50 grams of regular sugar, and the ground pecans or almond flour, whatever you're using. Mix until homogenous. Switch your spatula for a whisk and add in the first egg. Whisk until combined. Add in your second egg and again, whisk until combined. Throw in your chopped pecans and fold into the batter. Take your frozen tart shell and fill it with the batter. Smooth it out so it's one even layer. I like to use my mini offset for this, but you can use whatever works best for you. Once all smooth and gorgeous, pop it into the oven for 20 minutes or until golden brown. Let it cool until you can touch it. Start to decorate with your pecans. I just made a bunch of concentric circles because I thought that was pretty, but you can do it however you like. I spent a long time fussing with the middle because I couldn't decide how many pecans to fit in there and eventually decided on six little pecan petals and a single one in the middle. And I think it looks quite cute. Place your tart to the side for now. Into a pot, place 100 grams of honey. I'm using this gorgeous honey from the island of Gotland. It comes from one of my favorite farms, Puttehaus, and it's just a beautiful product. On top of that goes 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of cream, and 100 grams of sugar. Place on the stove and bring to a boil. Also, just a quick note, don't try to substitute the honey with something else like maple syrup. Honey is an invert sugar and keeps the mixture from crystallizing as it boils. Take the whole caramely business to 107 degrees Celsius or 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Very gently pour over the tart. You want to hit the top of each nut so that they're coated, but don't pour too aggressively because you could knock them out of place and we don't want that. I just continue to go around and pour on the nuts until I'm really at risk of overflowing. Then I moved it onto a sheet tray because I was worried about the honey caramel bubbling over. Pop in the oven for another 15 to 20 minutes. You're looking for all of the caramel to be bubbling these big, fat, lazy bubbles. See how slow these bubbles are? That's what you want. Let it sit on the counter until completely cool. Yo, I am so happy right now. This tart is like exceeds expectations. I just, it looks so good. Like professional who? Me? Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to stop talking now so I can actually cut into it. 
Okay, I think, do you see this right here? Looks like it's gonna be the perfect piece. So let's see if I can actually cut it, the anticipation. Okay, we're just doing it, we're doing it, we're going for it. Look at that, look how beautiful that is. And I got the little point too, I didn't get lost in there. Oh, <laughs> this is so exciting. I love it when it's like I know what I'm doing. I put you on here, oh my gosh. It looks so good, I'm gonna die. And like this right here, where my edge, like it's such a nice like hard 40, 90 degree angle, 45 degree angle, whatever. I can't math, but I can pie and tarts. Honestly, the only word for this is stupendous. This tart is stupendous. Oh my God. Like there's so many times where I make things and I'm like, am I even really like, how is it that I worked in three-star restaurants? How is it that I worked in all these bakeries? Like, do I even know anything about pastry? And then I make this something like this and I go, that's right. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. I'm so good. I'm so good. Oh, and listen. Before anybody comes at me and is like, well, that's not very humble of you. No, it isn't very humble of me. I don't do humility. I don't do patience and I don't do humility. In all of my work situations, the number one thing that I learned is that no one is gonna tell you, hey, you've done a really good job. They're only gonna talk to you when there's like a problem, right? Maybe that's a really like food industry specific take, but that is the world that I have worked in. So to compensate for that, because that'll make you feel really bad, right? Like really depressed. To compensate for that, I gas myself up all the time because I have had so many bosses and so many little savory cooks coming up to me and going, blah, 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 you suck for all of these reasons, right? Like those are the environments that I've worked in. To compensate for that, I got really good at telling myself this slaps. This is amazing. Because if you don't do it for yourself, other people aren't going to do it. You cannot rely on other people to be continuously gassing you up. But you know who can always gas you up? You. And also like you guys know, if I make something that's like meh, or if I go, ooh, I made a mistake, I will say, ooh, I made a mistake. Like, I don't really know what the deal is there. Or like, sorry, I guess I messed up today or whatever. Like, I know when work that I have done is not top tier. This, however, this chart, top tier, top tier. One of the best things I've made all year. I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next week is going to be the third and final part in my Thanksgiving tart series, and it is a cranberry tart. Think of it as like, lemon meringue pies, very much older, very much more adult, very much more sophisticated, fancy, older sister. It's gonna be good, y'all are gonna love it. Things get interesting. <laughs> if you liked this week's video and you'd like to watch more things like it, go ahead and check out this video next. And I hope you have a great week and that I'll see you next week. Hidua!